I'm in the Italian city of Ancona today filming some material for two video blogs and I thought this would be a good opportunity to address some of the many questions and comments that arrive on my YouTube channel, varying from how the superyacht industry was affected by the recent hurricanes in the Caribbean to practical questions about chartering a yacht and some of the more interesting comments that I received too. So we'll kick off with the hurricane question as John Smith asks, can you make a video on the effect of this hurricane season in the yacht market, charters business, Tortola gone, St. Martin gone, where should we go? Great channel by the way. Thanks so much for that question John because it gives me a good opportunity to tell you how the super yacht industry has reacted to those two terrible hurricanes that hit the Caribbean. First of all though, I need to point out that the hurricanes really affected the northern parts of the Caribbean, so the British Virgin Islands, Turks and Caicos, St. Martin, as you rightly say, were badly affected. Whilst the southern part, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, were really not affected so bad at all and, and it's business as usual in those parts. So there's still plenty of places in the Caribbean to go if you want to charter a yacht there or if you're just thinking of having a vacation there. However, let's talk a little bit about those islands that were really badly affected and just what the super yacht industry did to help. There's a wonderful organization called Yacht Aid Global that organized a number of super yachts of all kinds of sizes and types to take relief supplies to the islands most in need. So if plywood was needed in Turks and Caicos, for example, that's what they got. If water was needed in the Virgin Islands, that's what they got. This was not just a yacht arriving of their own initiative with some old clothes. This was a coordinated effort to give the best and most appropriate possible assistance to each island as a way for super yachts and their owners who have received so much pleasure from cruising the islands to give something back in a time of need. Now I've put the Yacht Aid Global website address on all of those images that you've just seen and I've also put a link in the description below this video because I know that a lot of crew, a lot of captains and quite a few yacht owners do watch this YouTube channel and it's very good to have Yacht Aid Global firmly on their radar. Moving on but still on the subject of charter, Freya asks, Hi David, I'm curious, if someone is wealthy enough to afford this for say two weeks, and I guess the charter cost is 400,000 per week, how can they not afford their own yacht? For example, 64 foot Amel or HR or an Oyster 80, is it not more inviting owning one than renting? Thanks. Ha, the eternal question of whether to charter or whether to purchase a yacht. And I can kind of see your logic here. You're saying that rather than spend 800,000 euro for a two week holiday and then the money's gone, you could buy a yacht, even if it's just a 64 foot yacht for 800,000 euro. And then you've got something that you can keep. I get that logic. However, 800,000 euros spent on a charter will be an unforgettable experience. A yacht at that kind of price, you'll have the world's finest crew looking after every whim, every desire. Some of the finest chefs in the world work on those sort of yachts, giving you the best food that you've ever eaten. The, the linen, the quality of the, the beds, the mattresses, the way that you sleep, it's an unforgettable experience. As opposed to an 800,000 yacht that you buy, which you'd probably end up washing down for yourself at the end of the day. So it is two very, very different experiences. Some people do like to pay to have the satisfaction of ownership of a yacht. Other people would rather just charter so they don't have the running expenses all year round. It's just different things for different people. Now, not everybody is so calm and polite when they leave questions and, and comments on my YouTube channel. Marine Boy got himself all bent out of shape about my Aston Martin video. This is what he said. What has this boat got to do with Aston Martin? Dutch design and American engines, hardly AM heritage, nameplate engineering. Why not stick the logo on a Hunton or a Sunseeker? At least there's a bit of Britishness going on there. Marine Boy, I'm afraid I just can't agree with you with this particular comment that you've left. 
putting the nameplate as you put it on a Sunseeker, that really would be nameplate engineering. And it's worth mentioning that Sunseeker is owned by a Chinese company now anyway. The AM37 design was very heavily influenced by Aston Martin designers at their headquarters in Gaithen in the UK. They got really involved with all of the design features. The fact that they used the Dutch company Mulder Design to design the hull, in my opinion, was a very good move since hull design is so very, very different from car manufacturing design. I should also mention that the uh, Aston Martin DB11, which had a lot of the design features of the AM37, uh, has a German engine. It now has AMG Mercedes engines on it. So Marine Boy, don't totally agree with you, but do carry on watching my videos. Jay Jouse also got quite irritated by an old video of mine that documented President Truman's presidential yacht, the Williamsburg. His beef was with my pronunciation, and he wrote, please learn how to pronounce simple words. I know the tithe for a start. Paul Anderson, meanwhile, said, David, I really appreciate the insight you give on the ins and outs of the super yacht industry. I would love to see a video explaining the implications of locating berths and how this would and could impact a yacht sale. I would assume some yacht sellers would want to keep their parking space if their intention is to buy another yacht, and this could influence the sale if a buyer is not in the same position. I would assume the berth finding aspect and costs are as time consuming as finding and buying a yacht. If you could fill in a few gaps in the process, that would be most appreciated. What a great question. You really would think that locating a berth would be a big factor in the decision making process of buying a yacht, but surprisingly enough, it's actually not. Just to explain the reason why, the sale of a yacht has got a lot of moving parts, whilst the berth is one of the very few fixed and immovable parts of the whole process. Just to explain what I mean by that, I'll give you an example. When a yacht is sold, it could be that the buyer is from Mexico. He finds a yacht that's located in Croatia. And when he buys it, he wants to take it to Miami with a view to then cruising up the coast to Fort Lauderdale, across the Bahamas and in the Caribbean. So everything is moving all the time. Whether or not that yacht in Croatia has its own berth is really immaterial to him. And actually whether it has a berth in Miami is not that important because he wants to go to the Bahamas. So generally speaking, what yacht buyers do is they ask either an agent or the captain to find berths in the place they want to be just for the time period that they want to be there. Added to that, certainly in the south of France, a lot of the marina developments here, um, the, the berths are bought on leasehold and the lease is about to expire. So the whole berth finding industry at the moment is in a, in a period of transition. And that's a great question, but to be honest, the whole locating of a berth isn't that bit of a factor in the sale of a yacht. So I hope that helps. Now I'm going to end this Q&A video with a truly wonderful business opportunity. And these things do sometimes cross my desk. Grandpa the Grey says, if anyone is serious about purchasing a billion dollar yacht, please contact me. Just let me know hull preference, steel or Kevlar, color scheme, and engine specifications. I'll require the billion dollars up front, but I personally guarantee you'll be delivered the finest $750 million yacht ever built. Send cash, check, or money order to Grandpa's Buffalo River Canoe Rentals, Ozarks, Arkansas. Thanks so much for this offer, Grandpa the Grey. And you know what? I have a business partner who has a diamond mine in Nigeria who'd like to go in with us on it. And even better news still, we have our first client because Mariam Ahmed wrote to me to say, I have just won $3 billion and I'm looking to purchase a beautiful yacht. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. So happy. Well, I'm so happy for you too, Mariam. And you see good things do happen to people that watch this YouTube channel and who subscribe. So that's all for this questions and answers video. It was a little bit different from the videos that I normally produce. So if you enjoyed it, and if you'd like to hear the answers to more questions, just leave a comment in the comment section below.